Alright, what's up everyone? This is the first episode of my channel called An Alternate Approach. And today's video, I'm going to discuss what has been a really hot topic lately. And that's about defunding the police. I aspire to be a future law enforcement officer after... I get out of the military, which I am currently, um, I'm currently enlisting for for the Air Force, and and for military police in the Air Force. And there's this whole notion that protesters are saying defund the police. They shouldn't have any allocated funds towards the department. I can see where they're coming from. I can. I can understand their good intentions because of all of the unnecessary wasted resources that are being fund um, yet yeah, so that are being funded into the police departments. However, I have to disagree with the notion of defund the police. Because when you're saying defund the police, you're essentially stating you don't want any money to be funneled into the police department and that doesn't make any sense the reason why that doesn't make any sense is because if if police departments don't have any money to be allocated towards their department all the police officers are going to lose their jobs and departments are going to be shut down <laughs> that means police officers are going to be laid off they will they will have no resources they won't have insurance, they won't have equipment. However, I will state that a lot of the equipment that police departments utilize and are being um, acquired, it's actually really unnecessary. For example, there are police departments in this nation, in different counties, states, cities, the whole nine yards. They have armored tank-like vehicles. That, no, no, no. In my opinion, that incites fear. And that incites anger and hatred towards the police. Police departments, their motto is to serve and protect and right now, yes, police, the perspective of the police today, in the 21st century, in light of the shooting of Michael Brown, of Orlando Castile, um, the murder of Eric Garner, um, 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 sorry, Breonna Taylor, countless others, and even George Floyd, they were... 100% unnecessary deaths and those police officers they are murderers and going off on that I can see why that there's a lot of animosity towards law enforcement however I I strongly believe that defunding the police is not the right way to go in my opinion, the right way to go is we continue to fund police departments. However, instead of allocating a tremendous amount of money and funds towards tactical equipment and unnecessary armored vehicles and assault-styled rifles that are paramilitaristic, why not allocate those funds to a more resourceful area within the police department? Like verbal communication, psychological evaluations. Here's, what's, here's what doesn't make sense to me. Police officers, they are... They are paid... They are paid customer service members because when, when an emergency erupts, 
for, for um, police department or oh, police officers are first responders and they are and they're one of the first groups if not the first group to arrive at a scene where there has been a disturbance of the peace and there are really three fields of focus that a police officer has to account for there has to be the perpetrator of the incident the victim well, sorry the victim of the incident and there's the police officer and yes you can say there are other extraneous factors such as bystanders or um or relatives of the victim of the perpetrator okay fine cool but the three primary categories in a in a disrupted peaceful event like i said is the perpetrator the victim and the law enforcement officer in the best case scenario three out of three of those parties live and the situation is resolved in an amicable and cordial manner the worst case scenario is not even when three out of three the um, the perpetrator the victim and the law enforcement officer are injured that's not even the worst case scenario the worst case scenario is when one of the three parties are either dissatisfied or one of them is injured and god forbid if one of them dies and i know i'm going to sound repetitive but the absolute worst 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 case scenario is two or three out of those three party members are injured or god forbid die and in a lot of instances police officers they are inclined to have their have their hand on their firearm ready in case if shit goes south i understand that because police off because because the because the job description and the toll of a police officer your life can their life can end in the field at any moment any sporadic any sporadic gesture any sporadic event can end someone's life like that it's a police officer having their hand on their firearm at a at any at any given moment it's not the most effective however police officers they they're risking their lives because they don't know what's going to go down anyway so the majority of the training for police officers in the academy is firearms training and self defense and that can include you know firearms training that can include their pistol well their pistol shotgun um semi automatic rifle and even non lethal weapons like bean bags tear gas batons and self defense as well in my opinion and also actually going back to that so and very little time is actually allocated and devoted to mental health and verbal de-escalation and psychological evaluations so in so why not cuz if your motto is to serve and protect why not protect people protect the citizens that are in your jurisdiction why not protect them with your communication people will view you or well, people will view police as a more sympathetic empathetic human being if we communicate people will not be incited by fear if you talk to them in a cordial and amicable fashion but if you have your hand on your side piece on your firearm of course people are going to be terrified and frantic cuz they don't know if the police officer if he's having a bad day if he's if he is psychologically not fit or stable to be in that profession so why not have more time allocated towards verbal de-escalation 
mental health counseling not only for the police officers since they will since at least once in their life they will in, they will have to endure any high stress situation that that will be volatile guaranteed at least once in their career and and focus on mental health within the community because once the citizens in your juris because once the citizens in the jurisdiction of the police department that you are patrolling and ensuring to serve and protect the citizens in that jurisdiction will have greater trust in you because they know oh let's let's say officer jenkins for example officer jenkins he doesn't incite fear he actually talks to the people in his community he is sympathetic he's empathetic he doesn't have his hand on his firearm 24 7 or or for a prolonged period of time let's just say as long as we have people like officer jenkins in communities where he is amicable, where he's cordial, he communicates, he builds that trust between police and citizen. As long as there's a police-citizen trust, then I feel like we're making the path towards a more righteous future of police not being as hated, as corrupt, as as no, not not as intolerable and we have to change the whole system too cuz like i said the majority of the the majority of the training that police officers and police departments um that they prioritize it's primarily firearms training and self defense courses yes it's necessary However, what is even more what is even more necessary is for police officers to have a sympathetic and empathetic mode as well cuz they're human beings too. They're not robots. They're not RoboCop. Police have emotions too. They have they have a life, they're human beings, they have a beating heart. And so do the citizens that they patrol in their jurisdiction. So let's, so let police departments allocate more time, energy, and and money, not towards tactical equipment such as armored vehicles and para and paramilitaristic vehicles like tanks and all that and armored vehicles and tear gas, and grenade launchers, and and semi-automatic assault rifles. No, cut that shit out. That's unnecessary. Instead, allocate those funds towards verbal de-escalation in an amicable and cordial manner, as well as psychological evaluations. And that's another thing. Psychological evaluations, even when you are enlisting to be a law enforcement official, and Bill, and Bill Maher, he pointed this out, the psychological evaluation, it's towards the bottom. It, it's one of the last prioritized, it's, it's one of the last prioritized components of, of the law enforcement enlisting process. Make the psychological evaluation one of the first things, if not the first component, to see if they are to see if future law enforcement members are are even eligible psychologically to be a police officer. Because if they're not, and you're just finding out about it at the very end when they went through all of the other steps, then what? You wasted not only the police's time. The ones interviewing the future law enforcement member, but the but the future law enforcement member interviewing, they've wasted their time as well. Because they say, Oh, I went through 90% of the requirements, but I can't be a but I can't be a cop now because I failed the psych test. Have the psych test 
in the very beginning, if not the very first thing to see if they are even psychologically eligible to become a police officer. Because police officers have an extraordinary amount of authority. They not only have they they not only have their their brothers in blue getting their back, they have the fraternity of police, the FOP behind their back. So and people are saying, oh, there's so many bad apples in the system. It's not bad apples in the system. It's the system that's the bad apple. That they're tolerating this. And it's so deeply ingrained in their in their frater- in their fraternal I guess camaraderie. It's so ingrained in the fraternal camaraderie that they have no they have no other choice but to brush it aside and saying, oh, this happens all the time, but that's the problem. It happens all the time. Make the psychological evaluations the very first component to see if they're even eligible. And if they're eligible, if they're, if they're empathetic, if they're sympathetic, if they're cordial, if they're amicable, if they're a people person, if they get along well with other people, then move them through the process. Because at this point, I'm not not only not only including not only just me, everyone worldwide is tired of corrupt police officers and their unjust modes of correction. We have to make a change. And we can all start by Allocating the funds from firearms, training, and tactical equipment to reallocating that to better communication and more psychological evaluations.